Check one, two. Ah, okay, there it is. Now it's working. What's up, everybody? I am trying to get this live stream thing going, and this is not going to be what it normally is because um, I just woke up from a nap not too long ago. Welcome, everybody, to Zero Hour Podcast. I'm your host, Zero for Hire. The top of my head is cut off of the screen. I just don't know what's, what's going on. I, um, like I said, I just woke up from a nap. And you have to forgive me for that. Um, I still don't... I don't know if there's other people coming into the live stream or not. That's fine. I, uh... Some stuff happened. And as you can see in the title, um... I just found out about Trump's in, uh, uh, tax returns. And I came across something really, uh... Really important that I want to show you about that. On the, um... I'll just, I'll just have to show you. So... Yeah, let's just roll the intro and um, yeah, and we'll go from there. Welcome everybody back to the Zero Hour Podcast. I'm your host, Zero for Hire. Today we're going to talk about two very specific things, two very special things. Uh, and one of them, I just want to go ahead and get it knocked out of the way. I've got open here a, a YouTube page. When I went to the home page, it became very apparent uh, what was going on with the release of Donald Trump's tax return documents. And I know everybody's been really, really hammering at that all day long. And I have to jump into the fray. So... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Boom. Got that so you can see it. Now, maybe I can scroll in on this page. I don't think it's going to let me make it any bigger. Maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Tim Pool. He did a video today. I love Tim Pool. 300,000. Uh-oh. 300,000 views on that video that Tim Pool did. I'm not going to play the video. Don't worry. Um, it just reset my whole page. That's fine. It's still going to show my point. Uh, Gary Lamb, uh, uh, a, a guy that we, I just recently found on, on YouTube. Uh, he was the one that inspired me to do the thank you, Tim pool video. Uh, he was the first one to do it. Awesome guy. Awesome videos. Awesome work that he's doing. Uh, he's got, uh, DJ raid runner. I haven't seen that one yet, but that one's got 3.3 thousand views. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, easy, uh, owner of aviation gym but he's also the owner of my cell phone company um and he's got a commercial that he just put out uh four days ago uh 982 000 views now that's over the course of four days and ryan reynolds is quite famous but gary lamb um he's kind of like a, a regular guy like me and he's he's doing his cool youtube channel he's been at it for a while it's only been two hours and he's got 3.3 thousand views now when you come to bloomberg news um, you can see that they're alive now and uh, they're talking about Trump's tax returns and there is 1.6 thousand people interested in that. Um, let's see. Something else on the CBS Evening News reporting on Trump. Uh, 2.1 thousand views. And, uh, you know, even though I'm not really in a position to play a numbers game, here's what I've learned about uh, the, the, the news that's uh, come out about Trump since Monday, especially since this tax return. Okay, this is going to be, you know, some of you guys might miss it, but this this became very apparent to me right away. Nobody cares about Trump's tax returns. So in other news, I uh, I was doing something, playing around. I'm watching The Boys on Amazon with my wife. You guys may have heard me talk about this. And I've talked about leftos, leftist bingo cards on my Facebook a couple of times. Uh, friends are like, Shay, are you serious? Like, are you seriously, what is this leftist bingo cards thing? And I tell you, it's a lot of fun. You got to try it out. So I got a link. I'll put the link in the description. And I'm not the only person to have come up with these leftist bingo cards. I'm going to, um, Let's go to the card generator. This, this is from a website called Bingo Baker. This is actually pretty funny. I thought that I was being clever. And the story goes that um, I just recently switched jobs. And when I was at my last job, I was uh, listening to podcasts a lot more. And I decided to go to the trending page of a podcast download thing. And it was like all 
you know, top trending, brand new podcast stuff. So I was just downloading everything, going down the list. And I start listening to this stuff, and it was like one thing after another. The same character um, in every show. And there was all these similarities. What do I got going on here? I can hear music. I can hear music. That's weird. Uh, give me some. Wait, 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 wait. I see what's going on here. Yeah, that was distracting me. So, anyways, I could hear um the same stuff in every show, and I was like, you know, a lot of these a lot of these cards come out of Hollywood, come out of L.A., come out of Portland, you know, those areas, West Coast, um, or is it the yeah, West Coast. And so I was just like, you know, maybe it's just like a leftist thing, like all of this, all the same personalities and everything. So I started writing down some of the personality traits. And that's kind of how I came up with leftist bingo. I was like, you could you could legit start to predict how the characters were going to behave and what was going to happen in the in the podcast that I was listening to. And so I made those cards, but I thought I was being pretty clever. And it turns out that I'm not really that clever, because when you go to this bingo baker website, there are tons of leftist bingo cards here. It's it's insane. I thought that I was, you know, the original having a cool idea, which, I mean, I am. I am having a cool idea, but let's check this out. Uh, Anarcho, leftist bingo. These are too small for you to read, but if you ever get in there, there's a couple of free spaces in here. I don't know what that's about. Uh, there's one called ultra leftist bingo and really it's more like capitalism, climate change, full communism, check your white privilege. I think that one's going to be pretty similar to mine. It says not real feminism. Uh, and then you got one that says Tim Pool lingo bingo card. So uh, Tim Pool, I don't think you'll ever see this video, but if somebody does uh, want to send Tim Pool a link to the Tim Pool lingo bingo, maybe you could watch that during this podcast or something. That's actually pretty funny. Uh, this was made last year, so he probably doesn't say something. Let me see. Um, social media or online platform criticism. <laughs> I think I've been watching him that long. Yeah. Uh, so this is as he was, uh, I, I, I've been waiting for, for Tim Pool to be kind of red pilled. And I think he's gotten to that point here. So that's, that's really cool. But eventually you'll come across my card and it's just called leftist podcast bingo. We got leftist call, leftist loser leftist podcast bingo and you click on that and you can you see my card for an example now you all you have to do is go to generate card i haven't done this on computer and uh you get this little box here just click this out of the way now as you can see on the screen there are some there's some language and uh i had to edit some of that out and that was intentional but I want to show you here. I decided it'd be cool to go through the, the the parts of the go through the little spaces on the podcast, explain what they are, explain what I meant by them because maybe it wasn't as uh, clear cut as I thought. You know, it's kind of like an inside joke. Maybe it needs to be explained a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do for this podcast, and or for for this today's video. And um, when we get to the podcast, I'll actually for real talk. Maybe about the Trump tax return and the news surrounding it. I mean, really, it's like, like nobody cares. Nobody cares about Trump's tax returns. I mean, like nobody's going to gonna find out anything that they've been saying on MSNBC and CNN about tax returns or New York Times or whatever. Nobody's going to read that or hear that and be like, you know, I never thought about that. Like a rich guy found some loopholes so he can pay less taxes than he should. Boy, I think I'm going to have to I think I'm going to have to vote for Biden. Nobody's going to do that. It's just not a thing. That's not going to happen. This is just this this is going to be the calmest week in in all of history up until the elections at this point. That's what news is telling us. Um and we're still and we have riots going on. But I digress. We're going to talk about leftist bingo right now. Now I printed out some pages and I don't have them in my hand. Uh, they're they're in the other room. I just figured I'll just use the screenshot. So if you look at the um, so we're gonna start the top row. And I, actually, I'm not gonna go in order. I'm just gonna go, um, you know, in easy from easiest to explain to more difficult to explain. I guess. Now here's the cool thing: whether you're on the computer or on your laptop, if you click one of the squares, it it lights up. So. My wife and I, we've been watching uh, 
The Boys. It's like a superhero show on, on Amazon Prime. And it's legit, like, messed up. It's super gory. It's really violent. There's a ton of swearing. It is not decent television. This is just gutter trash. Like, we... But it's superheroes, and so I guess we're going to watch it because, like, we can't help ourselves. But it's so egregious in every possible way that I was like, you know, I bet you those leftist bingo cards would work. And um, it turns out that my wife was able to get bingo after like 16 minutes of the show let me let me pull, see if i can pull this up um i'm gonna pull this picture up and then bring it up on the screen for you to see so as you can see here she got all of these plus all these extra spaces 16 minutes into the show and she was able to get left as bingo i'm gonna see if we can beat that record tonight so uh the, they have to write the F word. They have to write the S word into the script somehow. Like that's going to happen. Whether it's nonfiction, whether it's like supposed to be news, whether it's like this American life, whatever, it doesn't matter. If it's a leftist podcast, they got to fit these words in there somehow. Um, so that one's pretty easy. Uh, LGBTQ, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna mention it. They're, one of the characters are gonna be in this category. There's gotta be something from from the category, uh, in in order to have a leftist show. Um, and then this one is always. I I started noticing this before I really knew what leftism was. When I started, uh, I was trying to listen to the Crack podcast, Crack Magazine podcast, and he would always find a way to to bash God or bash Christianity. Uh, one of these guys was doing this. I was listening to a show and they were defining words. They were talking about the origins of definitions of words. And the guy found a way to bash God in a dictionary type podcast. I thought it was going to be the most innocuous thing, but apparently I was wrong. All right. So uh, flaunt depravity. This one requires some explanation. So I was listening to I don't remember what the name of a podcast was, but it was some journalist from the New York Post. I believe it was the New York Post. And she was talking about how she went overseas and she was doing on um she was doing a series a, a story on silk road that's what it was and so she had to use silk road to buy some pot and some molly and then she was talking about how good the drugs were right there on this like you know educational type podcast <laughs> like they were supposed to be serious news taken seriously she was talking about how she was doing drugs as a research project and i'm like wow you know because people are going to jail for that the guy who had that website went to jail for that. And here you are flaunting your your ability. Like apparently you have the, the privilege to just go on. Okay, so I, I, I guess I can guarantee that I'm I'm almost certain that if I had any any viewers for that last bit, they're gone now. What is going on with this? There, now I'm in focus. Okay, so that was that was odd. My battery, I don't have a, a plug-in camera. I have to use the battery, and the battery died in the middle of the transmission. So, yep, that's what I get for for making and explaining leftist bingo. Uh, let's continue. So, I was talking about flaunt depravity. That was the last thing. Now, the next thing is, um, what's another one that's... Orange Man Bad, that's pretty self-explanatory. Sometimes they'll actually put Trump in. Sometimes it'll be a reality-based program. They'll, they'll talk about Trump or it'll just be something where they, uh, where they happen to like write a character that's supposed to be very Trumpian, something like that. So that, that would count in something like that. Uh, glorify the Occult. So this one kind of goes in conjunction with the No God like if you're if you're ever listen to something like the Leviathan Chronicles where um, they'll make fun of religion, they'll put down religion, they'll basically they're trying to put down Christianity, but they'll say religion in general. And then they'll turn around in the same episode and one of their characters will be a witch or something like that's that's what I mean by glorify the occult. Um, they'll always find a reason to to make like traditional religion. Uh, especially Christianity and to like a bad thing, but at the same time they'll have like some some like voodoo witch doctors, one of their main characters or special character that week or something. It's ridiculous, but you know that's what it is. And that also goes with the asserting moral superiority. So basically, 
again, if you have any type of traditional values or sense of morality, you're going to get undercut by these podcasts, like to really just give it to you, to stick it to you because their characters are overly smart and funny and ambitious. So like, they can't just be like a scientist. They'll have to be like a scientist that's going away to some distant planet. Then there's a couple of shows where it's like the characters will have these flashbacks of, you know, their upbringing. They had this great childhood and they were really loved by their parents and they loved their own parents and everything seemed to be great. But for some reason on the show, they were just miserable and just very miserable. I don't know why they want the characters to be miserable. But that's something else uh, that comes up. So they'll remember when they grew up and it was great. But for now, they're miserable and every character must struggle against the dull ache of misery. So it's not always totally miserable, but they're never actually truly happy. Um, then that also leads me to the whole s struggle against purity. So like if somebody is a good person and they're just genuinely doing something good or, or trying to do the best that they can, case in point... Donald Trump donating his salary as president and taking a net loss for everything he's doing as president because he loves his country and to try to actually fix things like leftists can't understand like there's something in their brain they can't even they don't understand that they can't process that kind of information it's like what do you mean he's being altruistic what do you mean he's just doing it because he loves his country like that doesn't make sense he's got to be enriching himself somehow his children are enriching themselves uh, here we are talking about trump again uh blm that usually ends up in the commercials or the announcements or somewhere on the website um when they just like they take their whole masthead and it's just blm for no reason uh, I, I don't know like you tell me why you why that happens um, here's an interesting one. Veganism. I thought veganism was just a form of dieting, but apparently it's a form of morality. And the, the more vegan you are, the more morally superior you are in leftist podcasting. And they make a point to, to tell you that like they're not just it's like when me and my girlfriend went out and we got our vegan steaks, like they'll make sure you know that they're vegans because that makes them better than us. Uh, I don't I don't get it. So let's uh, effeminate men. Do I really need to explain that? And feminism, these ones go together. Now, the way that feminism usually gets hide it, highlighted is like the, the, the effeminate men are pathetic always. They're usually the announcers in the, in the nonfiction type podcast. Um, and just, if they're not, if they're like a manly character, they're like actually manly, then you'll have some like super smart ambitious like feminist character come in and try to make him look like a buffoon and, and and because they're writing the script it works so again i'll point you to like the leviathan chronicles is a really good they it, that happens all the time oh um, let's see we got another spiritual religious one bad things that christians do because uh you know the struggle against purity oh i didn't talk about the struggle against purity did i so the struggle against purity is just that. Um, yeah, I did talk about that. And and whenever somebody is uh, talking, you know, trying to do something because it's the right thing or, or, you know, they're trying to be religious in any sort of way, then the, the leftists in the podcast will definitely take them to task about all of the bad things or perceived bad things that Christianity or has been done in the name of Christianity. And it's, it's always like real thin veneer, never you know, like the middle ages, like a thousand years ago, stuff like that. Or somebody's dad did something once. And so I guess that represents all of Christianity. It's that, that kind of stuff. It comes up. It does come up. Yo, it'll be like, you know, don't preach to me about X, Y, Z because, uh, some, somebody was, you know, hurt by a priest or six, like, like that kind of argument. Like it's in these podcasts a lot, a lot. Uh, now, when I say elitism, I'm not talking about like some moral or, or, you know, perceived elitism. I mean, like people who actually have money who are just they're just better than you and they're and make sure you know about it. Elitism. Uh, this this one you see more in the Hollywood type podcasts where we're dealing with celebrities and stuff like that. Um, you might see it in other settings, but that's generally where I see that kind of thing. 
Uh, green energy, that one's another one that gets put in green energy and climate change. Like they'll just bring those up for no reason. Or if they don't, if it's not a part of the cl- plot, then it will be in the advertising in the commercial. So, um, another one that, that fits that as I'll just check it off now is mental health. So they don't talk about somebody being depressed or, you know, having behavioral issues. It's, it's mental health. It's always framed. It's as it's mental health because that way it can't be their, their fault. You can't control the way you behave. Uh, you have mental health problems. So you're just like flipping over coffee tables because and you're screeching at the top of your lungs because you hate Trump. But that's not your fault. It's mental health, you know, or people are like genuinely depressed because they're locked in their houses for months and months on end because of coronavirus. And they'll say mental health. And that just like, no, they're like you have a reason to be depressed. You've been in the house for like six months. Like it's totally understandable. <laughs> like you can do that. You can be sad that you're locked in the house. Like it's nobody should be happy about this. Um, green energy, climate change, they get mentioned, they get talked about. They're not always plot points unless the show happens to be about climate change. Like what was the one that kid show where it turned out does like don't don't chop down trees or something. Ah, I don't know. Uh, the, the main character must swear. Now, this you don't get away with in television so much, but if it's on a podcast where there's no regulations and no FCC and everything, the main character has to swear. It's almost like how they show their leftist morality. They have to share. Um, diversity. If you hear the words all inclusive, you're, yeah. Um, like on a podcast, it's kind of hard to tell the race of someone. Like they just talk. They're just voices. But they'll find a way to make you realize which characters are male, female, black, white, gay, not gay, whatever, for the sake of diverse. They, they will force that into the script. Globalism. I should have put globalism with an M, but I put globalist. Uh, this is the whole, like, I'm not American, like, anti-American kind of deal. It's almost, like, cool to not be American. I think... I think that's the whole thing with like lifting up the all the Canadians. No, but for some reason, like in these podcasts, there's like it's like cool not to be American, cool not to do things the American way, cool to make fun of American laws, the president, whatever. If it's American, you got to bring it down. You got to make it seem like it's less than everything else. And because what podcast wouldn't be complete if at least half the characters didn't talk like they were from Seattle, which is so weird. Like I I, I listened to a podcast where people were supposed to be living in montana or something no north dakota i think they were supposed to be living in north dakota but it wasn't like anything from north dakota or just that section of the country at all it was like what people who live in seattle think north dakota is like you know like they that's how they and then of course they all have that you know that accent like maybe i have an accent to people in seattle and maybe they listen to me and they're like oh you got that midwest michigan accent i don't know probably not but you know the accent when you hear it it goes real well with the whole like effeminate men so you can probably check off two of those at the same time if you're listening to a non-fiction like news thing where two guys are the hosts yeah they sound like girls and they talk like they're from seattle and they do it on purpose and that's that's left as bingo so yeah, I um, I hope I explained all that stuff for you guys. If you want, you can um, go to the link or you can go to the podcast. These X's keep coming back. Darn it. And I will put these bingo cards back up so uh, you can get yours or you can just go to Bingo Baker and, and seek it out. So you'll see it. But I'll put the link in the description. Glitched out. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do. I'll have more on the audio version.